Hi class, in this lecture here we're going to look at the law of cosines. And so we're going to work through two objectives here. We're going to use the law of cosines to solve oblique triangles, and I have um, two examples of this. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do a quick uh, applications problem uh, using the law of cosines. And now the law of cosines is going to be very somewhat similar to the law of sines in the sense that it's going to help us work with oblique triangles. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it's going to work with... Uh, um, triangles of a different kind of case. All right, so again, solving an oblique triangle means finding the lengths of its sides and the measurements of its angles. And the law of cosines, all right, very different from the law of sines in this regard, is used to solve triangles in which two sides and the included angle are known. Okay, so in, in the case when we have a side angle side of a triangle, are those in which the three sides, side, 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 are known. Okay, and the formulas here for this are a little bit more complex, okay, than the law of sines, perhaps. So if capital A, capital B, and capital C are the measures of the angle of a triangle, and lowercase a, lowercase b, and c are the lengths of the sides opposite those, those angles. So again, it just looks like this. Something like this. Here's angle A, here's angle B, here's angle C. All right, then... This side over here is A, this, this side over here opposite B is lowercase b, and this side over here is C. All right, then we have these formulas. It turns out that A squared, okay, so here, A, A squared, lowercase a, is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. Lowercase b squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of angle B. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of C, okay? So the square of a side of a triangle equals the sum of the squares of the two sides minus twice their product times the cosine of their inclu included angle. That's what you're seeing here. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to work through a case here um, where, where, where we have side, angle, side, and then I'm going to work a case where you have side, side, side using the law of cosines, Okay. So keep these formulas handy, and I'll, and I'll come back to them as needed. All right, so this is the case when you're solving a side angle side triangle. All right, the first thing, it's three steps, okay? You're going to use the law of cosines to find the side opposite the given angle, all right? Then what you're going to have to do, believe it or not, we're going to have to go back and use the law of sines to find the angle opposite the shorter of the given two sides. That's really important, okay? All right, and this angle is always acute when you do that. And then you're going to find the third angle by subtracting the measure of the given angle and the angle found in step two from 180 degrees. All right, so let's do a side angle side one here. So let's solve the triangle here shown in the figure, okay? With A is 120 degrees, all right, B here, all right, is seven and C is eight. And it says round the lengths of the nearest tenth and the angle measured to the nearest degree. Okay, so I've got the picture here. So step one, the first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to use the law of cosines to find the opposite side of the given angle. Okay, so this is the what you're gonna have to find first. All right, so step one, find A. All right, so look, you're going to have to go and you're going to have to use this formula. A squared, because I want to find A, is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. So A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times cosine of A. A lot going on there. All right, so A squared. Well, look, you're given B, right? B is 7 squared. <coughs> Excuse me. C is 8, so plus 8 squared, minus 2 times B, which is 7, times C, which is 8, times cosine of 120 degrees. So you have to make sure, again, your calculator is in degrees. So just check my mode. All right, I'm in degrees. So look, I'm going to do this all in one step. 7 squared plus 8 squared minus two times seven times eight times cosine of 120 degrees. 
Well, this one works out, you know, pretty pretty nicely here. Okay, so you get 169. So when you take the square root to solve, right, it's the length, so it's going to be just the positive, and the square root of uh, 16 or 169, excuse me, is 13. Okay, so we found we found a great. All right, so now look, now we need to find. All right, the law of cosines is done here. So now what we're going to have to do in step two is to use the law of sines to find the angle opposite the shorter of the given two sides. All right, so what what that means here is what's the, what's the shorter of the given two sides? So we were given seven and eight. <coughs> so step two, what we're going to do is we're going to use the law of um, sines to find angle B. All right, and so you're just going to use this. B over sine of B is equal to, well, look, I've got I've got a and I can find sine of a now is equal to a over sine of a. So what you're going to do is you're going to solve this for sine of b, right? So you would cross multiply, you'd get a times sine of b is equal to b times sine of a. And then just sine of b is equal to b times sine of a over a. So let's see what we get, right? B is 7, <coughs> A is 13, uh, and angle A is 120 degrees. So we'd get 7 times sine of 120 degrees all over 13. Let's grab our trusty calculator here. So this would be just 7 times sine of 120 degrees divided by 13. And, I, and I'll take this out four decimal places. Okay, so it's roughly 0 0.4663. So then what you're going to do here to get B by itself is you're just going to take sine inverse of this. And then we're going to round this to the nearest degree because it tells us to do that. So sine inverse of 0 0.4663. That's roughly 28 degrees. All right. So look, look what we're doing here. I've got the three sides now. I've got now I've, I figured out angle B here is 28 degrees. So now I'm just going to find the, the last step, step three, find the third angle by subtracting the measure of the given angle that we had, which was 120 degrees, and the angle we just found from 180. <coughs> so step three, find the last angle. So we have A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. Well, look, A is 120, B is 28. So C here, when we subtract, one eighty minus one twenty minus twenty eight. Boom, thirty two degrees. And we did it. We found we found the sides, the length of every side, and all the the measure of each angle. Awesome. All right, so that's how you're going to tackle a, a side angle side problem. Okay, let's do it now. Let's talk about uh, side side side. It's a little bit harder, or maybe not. It, it, you know what? It's going to be the same basic concepts. Um, you know, three steps and, you know, law of cosines first, then law of sines, and then just a very s simple subtraction to find the last angle. All right, so if you have a side, side, side case, here's what you're going to do. You're going to use the law of cosines to find the angle opposite the longest side. 
okay? So I'll set that up so you can see. And then once you do that, you can use the law of sines to find either of the two remaining acute angles, doesn't matter. And then you're gonna find the third angle uh, by subtracting the measures of the angles found in steps one and two from 180 degrees. Okay, piece of cake, let's do this. Solve this triangle ABC. If A is equal to eight, so here's angle A, so that means this is lowercase a. B is 10, and C is five. <coughs> All right, so the first thing it's gonna say is, use the law of cosines to find the angle opposite the longest side. So this is the longest side. So step one, we're gonna find B. So you have to look in your formula here, and you have to use, you know, you're gonna have to pick one of the law of cosines here formulas that has B in it, capital B, which would be this formula right here. So you're gonna have B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus two AC cosine of B. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna solve for cosine of B, all right? Solve this for cosine of B. So I have minus two AC cosine of B is equal to, I'm gonna do minus A squared minus C squared plus B squared. And then look, when I divide um, by minus two AC, I'm gonna move the negative to the top and it's gonna flip the side. So it's gonna be a squared um, plus c squared minus b squared all over 2ac. Now just plug in, literally just plug in, okay? So we have eight squared plus c squared, which is five squared minus 10 squared all over two times a, which is eight. Uh, times C, which is five. So look, I'm, I'm gonna 64 plus 25 minus 100, um, when I do the numerator, right? 64 plus 25 minus 100, I get minus 11. And then 16 times five, this is gonna give me 80, or two times five is 10 times eight is 80. So this is what I have. I have cosine of B is equal to minus 11 over 80. So that means B is equal to cosine inverse of that. Let's see what we get. Inverse cosine of minus 11 excuse me, divided by 80. When I round this, I'm gonna get 98 degrees, okay? Awesome. So look, I found B. So at this point, it doesn't, like it doesn't matter now what you're gonna find. Now you're gonna use law of sines to help you find angle A and then, or angle C. I'll, I'll do angle A, okay? All right, so let's do it. Step two, let's now find uh, A. So I have A over sine of A is equal to, now look what I have. I, I can do B over sine of B here. So again here, you're gonna cross multiply and then divide by A just so you can get, or excuse me, divide by B. So you can get sine of A is equal to A times sine of B all over B. Right, so let's go back and look. A is eight, uh, B is 10, and B angle B is 98. So this is eight 
times sine of 98 degrees, and then b was 10. So let's grab our calculator here. Eight times sine of 98 divided by 10 you get roughly 0 0.7922. So just so we're clear, that is what sine of A is equal to. So to get A by itself, you get sine inverse of 0 0.7922. Sine inverse, 0 0.7922. And you get this to be roughly, I'll round it down, a 52 degree angle, roughly a 52 degree angle. So look, let's go back. What we just found was A. So then all you have to do is use, you know, to find angle C. So step three, find the remaining angle. So we have A plus B plus C is equal to 180 degrees. Angle A was 52 degrees. Angle B was 98 degrees. So C here, again, just grab your calculator real quick. 180 minus 52 minus 98. It's roughly a 30 degree angle. <coughs> and look, we got everything. We got all the angles. We got the side, length of the sides. It's great. All right. Let's not do, I don't know, a fun application problem here. All right. So again, what you're going to notice is as I do this problem, um, the drawing is going to be really important. Like if you can draw this correctly, it's going to, it's going to fall right into place. So two planes leave an airport at the same time on different runways. One airplane flies directly north at 400 miles per hour. The other flies on this bearing of north 75 degrees east at 350 miles per hour. How far apart will the airplanes be after two hours? Okay, so the drawing here is going to be super, super important. All right, so here's the airport, okay? This is going to be plane A, okay? So I'm going to actually call this right here A, all right? So this, the, the, I'm going to have an angle here. Right. You'll, you'll see in a second. So this flies directly north. Okay, so it's literally going straight up. All right. At 400 miles per hour for two hours. So that means this length from the airport to where A is now is 800 miles because it goes for two hours. Now the next one, it, it notice how it says it's north 75 degrees east. So that means you're going to go north and then 75 degrees east. So this is B, okay? B is somewhere over here, okay? And that means this angle here is 75 degrees. All right, and they're going 350 miles an hour for two hours, so 700 miles. How far apart were the airplanes be? So I wanna find this distance. So notice I have a capital A, capital B. I'll call this capital C. I want to find this lowercase c, all right? This 700 miles is opposite my a, so I'll call this lowercase a. This 800 miles is opposite my b, so I'll call this lowercase b. So to find this, you're just going to go look. Well, well, what can I do? Look what I have. I have side angle side, so I can use law of cosines. I can use the formula that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab 
times cosine of C. Well, look, what's A? A is 700 miles. B is 800 miles. And you see, like, once you have the drawing here, it, like, falls right into place. 2 times 700. B is 800. Remember, this is going to solve for C squared. Cosine of 75 degrees. So it's going to be 700 squared plus 800 squared minus 2 times 700 times 800 times this cosine of 75 degrees. Wow, I got this crazy number, all right? <coughs> C squared is 840,122.6695. So then that means C is just the square root of this. So I can just raise this, you know, to the one half power, right? So 0.5. And look, I'm gonna round this to the nearest mile. Okay, so these planes are roughly, roughly 917 miles apart. All right, class, so again, for these applications problem, it's just about, you know, sketch it, you know, and then pick the appropriate, pick the appropriate formula to, to, to solve for what the problem is asking. All right, class, I hope this helped. And as always, if you have any questions, you know, please let me know.